Hey everyone, Retro Tech Dad here, and I am back again with another video focused on the development of Gamma OS by the Gamma Squeeze. Now, there's been a lot of development since I first published my video on Gamma OS for the RG405M, but now I am really excited to announce that Gamma OS is working for the Ambernic RG505 as well. So, this time around, we will be going over the install process for the RG505 going from the stock Ambernic firmware to Gamma OS, which will be version 1.3.3 at the time that this video will be published. So a quick overview if you are new to Gamma OS and what it is exactly. Gamma OS is a Lineage OS 19.1 based firmware for the Ambernic Unisoc T618 devices. Gamma OS specifically uses the GPU drivers from the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus to get additional performance out of the Ambernic devices. And speaking of performance, you will be able to switch from performance, normal, and power saving modes right within Gamma OS. In addition, Gamma OS addresses some of the shortcomings of the Ambernic Android build, such as the issues with the L2 and R2 buttons not working correctly in certain apps and games. Now there's tons of other refinements and fixes and I definitely recommend reading all of the changes which have been published at the Gamma OS GitHub page. Okay, so first things first, there's a little bit of prep work before we start with the install process. This process should work for the RG405M as well, but I will be specifically loading this onto the RG505 from the Ambernic stock firmware. Now I will be using version 1.3.3 with the Google services and Play Store pre-installed. There is a light version available, but that excludes those services and this video will not cover it. However, the install process should be pretty similar. So head on over to the Gamma OS release page on GitHub, which I will have linked down below, and grab version 1.3.3 from the download link. Click download from the Google Drive link and then go ahead and save it to a location you can easily access. Once downloaded, it's time to extract the contents of the zip file. I recommend simply copying the Gamma OS folder to your desktop for easy access until you've completed the firmware install. By the way, the included readme file has the same information presented on the GitHub page and again is worth going through to see the progress and some of the features included with Gamma OS. Okay, with the Gamma OS folder copied to your desktop, it's now time to open that folder and take a look at its contents. So you can see we have a few different files here. The first thing you will want to do is head into the Unisoc Drivers folder. There are going to be three different folders based on the version of Windows you are using. If you are on Windows 11, you can use the Windows 10 folder. Since I am using Windows 10 right now, I will go into this folder to continue the process. Now click on the dpinst64.exe file to start the driver installation. Make sure to say yes to any prompt and then click next to proceed. Once the install process is done, you will get the final screen which shows the Unisoc drivers are ready to use and then click on finish to close this window. Alright, so now we need to head back to our web browser and download the latest version of ADB and Fastboot++ from their GitHub page. I will have a direct link to the release page, and at the time of this video, the latest version is 1.0.8. Under Assets, I recommend downloading the .exe file which will install this to your PC. Once downloaded, you might get a Windows prompt that says they protected your PC. Just click on More Info and then Run Anyway to allow this to install. All right, you should now have the setup window open. Make sure to select the I accept agreement and continue on. Hit next one more time. And then on this page, I recommend leaving everything as default. Again, having the desktop shortcuts for the time being will make this easier to follow. Click next to proceed. Give it a few moments and then you will be at the final screen. You need to make sure to check off the install universal ADB driver and then uncheck the open the toolkit and launch ADB options. Click finish. Now that window will close and then another install window will open up to start the universal ADB driver setup wizard. Click next to proceed, then install to the default location, click next, and finally it will say installation complete and hit close. Now head on over to your RG505 and enable USB debugging. You can do this by heading to settings, then scrolling down to about device, and then scroll down to the bottom and keep tapping on build number until it says you are now a developer. Go back one step and then go into system and scroll down until you see developer options. Once here, make sure that use developer options is turned on and then scroll down a little until you see the USB debugging option and turn that on and now you should be good to go. Now grab a USB-C cable and connect your RG505 to your PC. 
I definitely recommend juicing up your RG505 before we begin the next steps, and you will want to remove your micro SD card to avoid any issues when booting into recovery mode. On your RG505, you will most likely get a prompt to allow USB debugging. I recommend checking off Always Allow from this computer and then click Allow. Okay, so from your desktop, click on the ADB and Fast Boot Plus Plus shortcut to open the command window. Now type in the following command, ADB, Reboot, Bootloader, and hit Enter. The RG505 should now reboot and you will see the following text on screen that says Fast Boot Mode. Now back on your PC, open up the following site in Google Chrome, which I will have linked in the description box and is also going to be displayed on screen. You should have the Unisoc Bootloader Unlock tool on display. Click on Connect and then a window will prompt to connect. And from there, select Fast Boot Gadget and then click Connect. It will say Connected under Device Status. Now click on unlock and head back to your RG505 and the device will say warning unlock device may erase user data. It is critical that at this step you press the back button which is on the right side of the RG505 to proceed with this process. Wait for it to complete and then you should have the unlock bootloader success displayed on your RG505. Okay, back on your PC again, it's now time to close the browser window that has the bootloader unlock tool open. Once the browser has been closed, return to the command window and enter the following command. Fastboot, space, reboot, space, fastboot, and hit enter. You should now be in fastboot D mode. Double check that your RG505 matches what you are seeing on screen. Okay, now we are ready to flash the firmware. On your PC, close all command windows and return to the Gamma OS folder on your desktop. Click on the 505 flashpartitions.bat script file to begin flashing the firmware. You will choose the 405 file if you are using an RG405M. This step will take a few minutes so just be patient. When it's done, the window will close automatically after 60 seconds. Now return to the same folder and open the erase user data.bat script file and it will begin factory resetting the device to prepare for Gamma OS. This step can take some time as well, so just sit back and relax and when it's done, the window will close on its own. Okay, you can now reboot the RG505 by pressing the power button once. The RG505 will reboot and this will take a few minutes to complete for the first time while it sets everything up. By the way, you will see debug messages on the Ambernic logo screen which is normal and nothing to be alarmed about. In addition, the boot time will be much faster the next time around. And that's it, you should be on Gamma OS now and see the Google setup screen. Run through this process to set up your Wi-Fi, log into your Google account, and once done, the RG505 will automatically boot into the Daijisho front end and I think you're just going to notice how much faster everything is. So within Gamma OS, you can now switch between different performance profiles. There are three available to us which are power saving mode, normal performance, and max performance. You can switch between these by pressing down on L1, R1, and R3 and holding until you get the confirmation that you've switched to a different mode. Now another feature is being able to switch between Xbox and Nintendo Switch style mappings. This is done by pressing down on L1, R1, and L3 and holding until you get a confirmation. I also wanted to briefly mention just how impressive battery life is on the power saving mode. Gamma Squeeze tested this on his RG505 running various games and emulators and hit almost 21 hours with this mode, which is absolutely incredible. Gamma Squeeze states that this setting is pretty good for most emulators from PlayStation 1 and earlier. Now here's some quick gameplay footage of Dead Cells and pay attention because I am using R2 without any issues and this addresses one of the more annoying bugs with the Ambernic build and now we have L2 and R2 working as it should. Finally, I just want to say thank you so much to the Gamma Squeeze for all of his work on this. He's been incredibly helpful and responsive to the community and is always helping out and answering questions as well as listening to feedback. If you're part of the Retro Handhelds Discord, 
I definitely suggest giving him some love and thanking him for his work. I can't wait to see what further progress is made on Gamma OS, and hopefully we will see this make its way to some other devices that desperately need it. I've got to say that with Gamma OS, I've been compelled to use my RG505 more, and it really has brought new life to this device for me, which is really awesome. I think the RG505 with Gamma OS becomes a really solid consideration, especially since Ambernic has had some very good sales on the device, making it one of the cheaper T618 devices from time to time. And so with that, I am the Retrotech Dad, and I thank you so much for watching.